<laughs> okay, where do I begin? So I wanted to do a whole video on this just because I feel like I wanted to be as open as possible and even though my channel is quite an informational and educational channel, I wanted to keep you updated on where I'm at in my career and in my professional life as well as personal life. It feels like it really wasn't long ago that I was literally sat here doing a video about how I got the job at Bloomsbury. As you would have guessed from the title of this video, I am leaving Bloomsbury. This is not something that I wanted to do. If you follow me on Twitter or on my bookstagram or you're connected with me on LinkedIn, you'd have seen that I did a whole post on this. You would have seen that I've been offered a role elsewhere, which I will announce in a separate post or a separate video. But for now, I just wanted to focus on my experience at Bloomsbury and yet yeah, the fact that I am leaving. So I joined Bloomsbury two, or almost two years ago. I joined in October, 2019 and I joined as an apprentice. In the UK, there was internships for publishing but there wasn't any apprenticeships. So I was part of the first cohort. There were 16 of us that took part in this apprenticeship for publishing. And what it meant was that we were employed by these companies such as Bloomsbury like me. And then alongside that, we had the capacity to be learning about publishing as a whole. So we had modules that we were studying every month. We had workshops to go to in the, the training providers offices. Like so, so much more than that. And oh, my voice broke. And that lasted about 15 months until we were sort of like qualified and then I was kept on as a permanent employee. That time was really stressful for me because I felt that I'd really proved myself in the apprenticeship. We did have what's called an endpoint assessment and if I didn't pass that I would feel a little bit deflated having spent 15 months studying on it. Um, but if you've watched that video you would have seen that I passed and I got a distinction and then it was this waiting game of are Bloomsbury going to keep me on now that I've worked for them for a year and a half and I'm now qualified. It was on a Friday and I remember getting the call from my manager just saying have you got five minutes to talk and she basically said yeah we want to offer you the permanent position. Again that really really doesn't feel like that long ago and in time wise I suppose it really it wasn't that long ago. I think that was February and we're now sort of almost September. Since then again Again, it's just been fantastic. I didn't know what to expect going from an apprentice to a full-time employee because obviously I wouldn't have that time to for education. I thought I'd be a lot busier because work would pile up on me now that I didn't have that um, time that had to be studying. But literally as an apprentice at Bloomsbury and as a full-time employee at Bloomsbury, it's been fantastic. Like I thought like I'm actually gonna tear up. I put a post out to say on LinkedIn and everything that like it really wasn't an easy decision in the fact that I didn't want to leave. I wasn't searching, I wasn't actively searching for jobs because I do like my role, I love my role, I love my team and I love the company especially. I think that Bloomsbury do a lot for their employees. Maybe it's because it's the first publisher that I work for, I, I, I can't say, but I think that I love the way that they went about things. I love the books we published. I love the size of the company. I, I, I just loved it and I was able to get on board with some of that, the company initiatives as well. So it does feel like a shock, like what am I gonna do now that I'm not there? Or day to day, my role is gonna be changing completely. Um, I'm going to a different company. As I said, I don't want to like focus on that. I want to talk more about my experience at Bloomsbury. So yeah, obviously I joined as an apprentice. So everyone always asks me like how I got into publishing and tips for it, but I feel almost like I can't provide that just because I did have that kind of different route. And although the apprenticeships are carrying on, unless you're going through that route, I can't give you experience into like the application process. <sighs> I literally remember my trial day. So two of my colleagues who I still work with now, however, they've been promoted. I don't work directly with them. I remember being on a trial day at Bloomsbury. So we went into their amazing offices in Bedford Square and yeah, we had a trial day. So we had to work the whole day and it was between me and another person. And then they would just kind of watch us all day and see who was kind of like the better fit for the role. And obviously I got the job after that, but I, just, I remember being with like my colleagues now who like now I would like joke around with and stuff. So it does seem kind of weird that I've gone from like being that completely new person gone on that trial day to now where I'm saying goodbye to them all. It's gone really quickly. Like I genuinely still feel like the new person. I still feel like I'm doing things wrong sometimes. I still feel like I have to prove myself all the time. But ha having said that, I've been there almost two years now. I'm gonna get up what I said on my post because I can't really remember what I wanted to sort of talk about. I gave more thank yous than anything in this post. So obviously I was thanking my manager for being really supportive. She has been my manager since I joined as an apprentice. I actually interviewed me when I was an apprentice in one of the interviews 
few stages so she's taken me all the way up until this point so it's been nice to have her there to see me kind of grow personally and professionally and obviously a massive thanks goes to her for being there for me and if I had a problem she'd obviously she'd just come back with a practical solution straight away and I think that really helps then obviously my immediate colleagues so when I was in the office I genuinely felt like such a burden that I was just asking questions left right and center but like I say to people now like you're not going to learn unless you do that and anyone new that's joining remotely now I still say that like put it in our teams chat just send us as many questions as you want but I did feel a little bit of an outcast when I was there I would say and so I just want to thank those employees for putting up with me because I was probably a bit of a bit of a newbie a bit of a mess to my newer colleagues so a couple of those who I'm like closest to now I was I was sort of part of training them and that really solidified my confidence to be honest because I as I said I still feel like in some aspects of my role I didn't feel very confident in it but then training new people that kind of realizes actually I know a lot more and I've learned a lot more than I've realized then I just wanted to say thanks as well to the other departments that let me help out with their work so as part of the apprenticeship we had that time to help out other departments do other research etc and that's one of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel because I wanted to carry on that kind of research and learning aspect of it so I loved marketing publicity I worked with them for about 10 months of my apprenticeship I think that I just emailed them all the time being like hi can I help hi can I do something hi give me something to do maybe it was a bit annoying for them <laughs> at times but that really has given me so much experience that's going to help me in the future as well in the immediate future and then there have been people at Bloomsbury that have helped me do this channel so if I've so I've done videos recently on like what hiring managers say to get into publishing and like a lot of those were from people from Bloomsbury people that have just given me ideas without even realizing it or suggesting ideas this channel wouldn't be what it is without a lot of the people at Bloomsbury and the company itself like there's so many things that I want to talk about that Bloomsbury does and I wouldn't have that kind of insider knowledge hadn't had I not had this experience and been working for them oh yeah so I then talked about like different like highlights I've had at Bloomsbury I couldn't when I was writing this post I couldn't really think of any off the top of my head but you know when you feel like there's so many more so the first one I said about like the feeling I'll put a picture in here as well but the feeling when I got my first advanced proofs come through I mean it was a reprint so I didn't actually like work directly on the book I, I think the only thing I changed was like the prelim so like the copyright pages but that feeling of when it came through and it was like oh Eleanor this is for you and it had my name Eleanor Rose massive on it and I took a picture of it because I was like oh my god I'm actually I'm making a difference here and then I said about Gino De Campo. I was really shy when I did this, but I'm so glad I did it. I was like quite a shy person at the time, and I still feel like I am like that to a certain extent. But I saw that Gino De Campo was coming into our office. Right, I saw him in the reception or something, and our room at the time was literally next door to reception. So I literally went out, went to him, and <laughs> just quoted his line. I was like, I, I, can't, I said something before it, and I was like, oh, if my grandmother had wheels, and then he joined in and was like, she would have been a bike. What I mean, if my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. <laughs> and then he just sort of laughed with me and hugged me and stuff. And that was that was definitely a highlight of my career working at Bloomsbury because I love Gina De Campo. Like who doesn't? He's hilarious. And then I think we've got if it's not already out, I don't think it's out yet. We've got a book coming with him uh, at Bloomsbury, so a recipe book, obviously. There's been other people as well. I can't think of the top of my head because I worked in the academic division. I didn't really work with like high, what do you call it, like high name. I didn't really work with people that were like famous as such. There's two of my colleagues that always just happen to wear this spotty. I think one of them was trousers and one of them was a dress or a top or something. I can't remember. They always just seem to wear it on the same day. Like it just became a running thing of like, oh my god, how have we just come in, in the same outfit again? And, and it happened one day that they did that, that exact same thing and then me and my other colleague dressed basically the same as well so we've got a picture of that um of just four of us all matching and then i put on here as well about um after our work like christmas party and that was another thing like even that itself was like so fun and then i live in kent and so you have like the last trains home and i'd missed it and was like oh my god how am i gonna get home and so i had to stay at one of my colleagues flats in london because i literally couldn't get home but after that i remember our manager brought us in like a massive box of krispy creams and we generally felt like we'd won the lottery but yeah one of, one of my colleagues didn't realize there was a fridge next door to us so in Bloomsbury in our office it is a bit confusing like you don't necessarily know what's behind each door because there's these like big wooden fancy doors but she'd made a comment about like going all the way downstairs to go get a cup of tea and we were like why were you going all the way downstairs why don't you just go to our kitchen so what do you mean and then yeah literally showed her that next door to us we had a, a bigger kitchen and she was gobsmacked. she felt like she'd won the lottery then so never after then did she go to the kitchen downstairs
I don't think anyway. Yeah, and then I said obviously like I'm, I went to one of our printers. I would love to do that again to be honest because I feel like I was so new to Bloomsbury and to publishing when I went to that printer that I didn't really sort of like take it all in. And especially for my YouTube now, I would love to just go around and like vlog it all. I did take a few pictures, but not as many as I probably would have liked. But yeah, one of the things that they let us do was go visit one of our biggest printers. But I, I made an album on my photo, on my photo, on my phone of all the photos like at Bloomsbury relating to Bloomsbury. So first of all, we have a few pictures of the amount of books that I had I used to get free proofs I literally forgot about that so the reception used to be next door to our office and they would just email everyone and say proofs are in the reception everyone would literally bombard everyone would literally just run down to reception and try and get them so this is my massive pile everyone would decorate at Christmas we're doing paper chains and stuff so I had a spare desk well, I'm gonna miss that I had a spare desk because there was not another person that needed to sit there so I would just literally use as much space as possible the author talks were also a massive highlight we used to just sit in the conservatory and author would come in and give us an inspirational talk this was the office dog so one of the exec has a hearing dog sasha and she was just beautiful some of these photos are from when we went this must be yes yeah, it's full for december so it must have been like our christmas do or something um and it was this like beautiful location and yeah had all these fancy lights and stuff and behind us it had yeah like a load of books i can't remember i feel like that was in like holborn and yeah i've obviously said in here there's so much more like that i mean a lot of that was just when we were in the office and that was only in the first like few months so like since then there's just been so much that we've done like virtually like virtual calls and stuff even though it's been somewhat hard we've still done a lot and just at work I've just made memories which I will remember for a very long time and then I kind of just finished off on here saying I remember my first day like it was yesterday you think I'd learn to avoid cliches by now I feel I still feel like the new person so it seems crazy that I'm saying goodbye when I spoke to my manager on a call to hand in my resignation I did say that thank you for actually making it hard because it's not like I wanted to leave and it's not like I'm happy to be leaving I'm genuinely I'm actually tearing up I'm genuinely sad to go because it has been a fantastic opportunity I've loved it I've loved my job and a lot of people can't say that which makes me very nervous to leave to be honest like what if it's not the same and all those kind of like normal feelings of starting a new job but it, I know that you know it's, it's like the right thing for me it's like the right thing for me professionally and I am excited for the new role but it does seem sad disheartening to, to leave Bloomsbury um, saying that they probably haven't had the last of me I'll probably come back for something else who knows what it is um, but yeah I just wanted to kind of keep you updated on where I am like that's that's me so my last day at the moment is the Friday the 1st of October 2021 um, however I'm then starting my new role on the Monday and I kind of want a bit more breathing space than just the weekend to prepare me for that so I might um, I might be leaving Bloomsbury just a little bit before that by taking some of my annual leave that is me that that's been my experience I've I've been working on books I've done a couple of day in the life which i'll link down below as well so you can see exactly what my role was like thank you again genuinely to all the people that have made my experience what it is because going in it alone was very very scary and to see who i was i'm actually good i'm actually keep trying to tear up to see who i was like joining bloomsbury and feeling very outcasted feeling very shy feeling very much like i didn't belong there and to come out now and be starting this youtube channel and have the confidence to talk about my experience like this like it 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 means so much to me personally. Thank you everyone for, for kind of helping me develop mentally, professionally, personally, everything. I've, I've grown in the last two years in every good way possible.